Guys, welcome back to the Beard Vlog here on Will the Beard Reviews. Once again, today is new comic book day, and I just got home, got my new comics right here. Let's go through them real quick, and I want to talk about one of the comics that I did not pick up today. So first off, we got a little Future State Gotham, a little hangover from the Future State stuff. New X-Men. Heard this one it was really good, especially um, Jamie Madrick's Multiple Man in this one, so very excited for that. Uh, X-Factor, a little sad about this one, uh, it's recently announced that this one is going to be ending with issue 10, and this one is issue 9, as you can see, so unfortunately only got a couple issues of that one left. Uh, Children of the Atom, number 3, uh, I'm curious on this one. Uh, issue 1 was pretty good, issue 2 was also pretty good, but they need to kind of give me a reason to hang around on this one other than plying my good faith in it being an X-Men book and just leaning on that for me to get it little uh, Star Wars The High Republic here. Also, update, I'm about a th two-thirds of the way through Star Wars The High Republic Into the Dark, the novel. That's been pretty good as well. I'll do a full kind of mini-review on that when I'm done. Proctor Valley Road, a little bit of horror stuff. Then, of course, we got some Power Rangers, some Magic the Gathering, and then finally, Batman Urban Legends number three. One book I was going to pick up this week, but I didn't, was Joker issue number three. Now, I was originally hesitant to pick up um, the, the book for the Joker because I'm not that big a fan of the character of the Joker. I think he's a little uh, oversaturated in, in the Batman or even in the DC universe. And I, I ended up picking up number one because I heard it was a little bit more Jim Gordon-centric than it was Joker-centric. And it, that ended up being very, very true. And I enjoyed issue one. Uh, and then I picked up issue two. And I, I actually kind of loved issue number two. It had a very... Uh, fantastic moment between Jim Gordon and Barbara Gordon, um, which I won't spoil here. Uh, and then issue three came out today, and it was it was five ninety nine, and that's just too much for for a single issue. So right now most comics are three ninety nine cover price, and I think that's like twenty four content pages with some ads and stuff thrown in. Um, and usually you'll get like $4.99 for uh, like a slightly thicker book, like up to 32 pages or something like that. Like um, that X Corp number one this week is a little bit thicker because it's the first issue and it's $4.99. And yeah, that irks me a little bit, but I understand I'm getting a little bit more content for an extra dollar. That's fine. Similarly, there's also some DC books coming out right now that are $4.99 cover price for uh, two stories. You have your main story and then like eight Eight pages I think for a backup story and that's fine and the backup stories have been of varying quality as well and Joker is one that has that backup story the problem with Joker is that they also publish both the A cover and the B cover on their cardstock covers which adds another dollar to it and now we're at six dollars for a single issue where while I'm enjoying the main story the backup stories aren't doing it and I don't care that it has a cardstock cover. I've never been one to, you know, chase after um, variant covers or things like that or covers with different materials like hollow foil or whatever. I really don't care for, you know, I'll just pick out the one that I like best that's, you know, a standard cover price. So I, I left that one at the shop. Um, I think I'm going to draw a line in the sand on on that one. Like you, you, you got my $4 for a standard issue. If it's got a backup story or it's a bit of a thicker book, with more content, five ninety nine or four ninety nine is fine, but six ninety nine for a single issue just it's it's not doing it. Especially when I can you know have a more cost effective entertainment dollar uh, in the comic book world, going and buying a trade for a series I've been wanting to read. Like I've been wanting to read you know Trans Metropolitan Volume Two for a while. I got Undiscovered Country over there. I've been wanting to get to, and it's just it's I know it's always been uh, or at least for a long time it's been much more cost effective to buy trades um, over uh, single issues and. Yeah, it's getting worse. So I'm um, I'm drawing the line in the sand with with Joker. Uh, so hopefully uh, DC will. I, I doubt they'll see this, but you know, it's uh, it's my line in the sand. Like I've said a couple times already. Sorry to start this video on on a down note. Trust me, we're gonna have lots of fun stuff throughout the rest of this video. Uh, stay tuned for that. It's the coming up right now. All right, like I said at the end of last video, if you stayed through the credits, today we are gonna do a full 
office tour. And today, uh, aside from the full office tour, is going to be the beginning of the great office rearrange of 2021. So we're going to go through the office as it is today, the studio, if you will, as it is today. And then I'm going to go through some of the changes that I'm going to be making because I have to rearrange the room to manage all of the comics that are in the room. If you remember from the first vlog that I did at the very end, I showed that I have comics all over the room. Yeah, I need to deal with that. So I got a new shelf. So we're going to rearrange the room after we go through it. And then I'll kind of keep you guys up to date as, as we're going through the room and how I'm managing all of these comics and everything. So in the meantime, let's get to the office tour portion. So first off, we got a coffee cup. You know, always got to have coffee. Got um, a Xbox controller for, for playing playing the video games. Um, magic cards on, on the shelf. There's the box for the controller. There's the, the tinfoil hat I wear in the Department of Truth videos. Uh, and there's the shelf. So there you go. Full full office tour. Is that, is that what you guys wanted to see? No, you guys wanted to see everything. All right, let's do this. So this is where the magic happens. This is uh, my desk computer there's the um the camera that i use to show the um the, the comics on the desk there's the camera that i'm usually attempting to look at microphone all that fun stuff and then the shelf that kind of sits behind me with the backlighting and everything you guys have seen that you know what that looks like that is is not changing that is all staying the same the desk and the shelf and everything are staying the same uh then over there in the corner Got uh, some, you know, comics. <laughs> like I said, they're everywhere in this room. And then on the wall right there, actually one eagle-eyed uh, viewer, Keith, uh, noticed this before. These are all uh, tap poles that my father-in-law gave me a few years ago. He bought them at a uh, at a restaurant auction. And they're just all like kind of random ones. And then he ran bolts through this shelf that he he built, this rack. So they screw on there. Only four on each one are, are actually on the bolts. The others are just kind of sitting in there. Next up, got a uh, Steve Ott signed puck. If you guys are any uh, hockey fans out there, I used to watch a hockey a lot more than I do today. I uh, just don't have the time to follow sports anymore. Uh, another restaurant auction find for my father-in-law is a Harp Lager uh, neon sign up there. I don't turn that on as much as I need to. Uh, it makes a really loud buzzing sound and it's kind of annoying, but I still love to have it, so it's still up on the wall. Um, like you can see there, um, more more comics because comics are everywhere in this, in this room. Kind of coming around this side over here, of course, you guys have, have seen the computer. Um, more comics on the floor there. And then we start to get to some stuff you guys probably haven't seen before. So in a in a previous life, I was a musician with my church. I played with them for 10 or 12 years almost every Sunday in the um, in the church band. So this is kind of my my leftover stuff from from that you know, decade of my life that I just still have, don't really have plans to, to get rid of. So there's a pedal board that I had uh, built for myself when I had way too many pedals. Um, I don't use it anymore, obviously. So now it's just kind of, kind of sitting there. Um, some guitar cases. This is actually a, uh, a fretless bass that I built, um, or kind of had built. I bought the body with all the electronics in it off eBay, then got the neck um, and had a local shop put it together for me because I wanted to try fretless and it was it was really fun when I was you know playing. <laughs> then uh, this case, this is actually an old suitcase that I traveled with um, as a kid, an old Samsonite, um, and I have that's actually another pedal board. I cleaned all the guts out of it and then cut a plank of wood to fit into it with um, some risers on it to make it tilt a little bit, covered it in carpet so Velcro would work on it, and now it just sits in there and it's got a padded um, top in there. Maybe I'll crack that open in a different video. It's obviously covered in stuff right now. Uh, my Ampeg amp that I used, this is my my first and still my favorite base. This is a PV uh, foundation. I love this thing. I, I've got a couple other bases, but I always found myself going back to this one because it was always amazing and never failed me. Uh, movie posters on the wall. You guys have maybe seen those if you've been around the channel for a long time. I used to film um, over here before I rearranged the office and things like that. Uh, old nightstand that's just, you know, covered in comics and magic cards because that's a recurring theme here. 
Then we get to this side of the room, and you may recognize this as well, just all the, uh, the comic collection there on shelves with the boxes and things like that, and then, you know, comics on top of the boxes and things like that. <laughs> what you may not have seen before is these up here, a bunch of old uh, X-Men action figures from the 90s from uh, the TV show. The, uh, the couple slots that are missing are ones that I've, you know, put on the shelf uh, back over here, like the Cyclops and the Gambit ones and things like that. So, you know, kind of from that selection or from that uh, collection from Toy Biz, I think it was, yeah. Then we get into some Marvel Legends stuff kind of before they were um, in in this packaging right here. So kind of the, the generations before they got there. And again, the ones that are missing are either the Gambit one over there or there's a Beast one um, right here. I got a... Uh, Sinestro Core Batman. Hopefully you guys can see that. That's one of my favorite figures just because it's so weird and so niche. And then we get some uh, some Star Wars figures there as well. So that's a, that's a tour of, of most of the office. So what's going to be changing? Well, like I said, the desk and the shelf over here, that's not changing at all. What is changing is this wall over here and this wall over here. And I'm basically going to take all of this stuff and put it over here and all this stuff and put it over here because I've outgrown the boxes over here. There's 38 short boxes here um, and most of them are full and you've seen all the comics that I have laying around the room. So I need to expand. So I got another one of these, these shelves uh, right here. I need to put it together. And on this wall over here, let me flip you guys back around. On this wall over here, I can actually get three of those shelves. So I'm gonna move the two, move the two that I have over here and put a third one and then start getting more short boxes to, to fill in, probably order a pack of 10 from uh, BCW or something like that and start filing in the comics uh, that I have. And then all the music stuff will, will come over here and be on this side of the room. I also need to put a small table right here room to bag and board and i'm also gonna i work from home so i'm gonna work in my office versus at the uh at the, the kitchen table so that's the changes that we're going to to make in the office and that's gonna start today so you'll probably see some b-roll or something of me schlepping boxes around the room which is just gonna be a blast because you know moving comics is oh so fun empty corner boys and girls now i just need to vacuum all the stuff that was here is 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 now over here so we've completed part of the <laughs> the staging we have to take all this stuff put it here so we can take all of this stuff and put it here and then this stuff can go there and then i can have a shower because ew did you find a new spot kitty okay you just gonna chill out in the empty shelf is this your new spot you gonna hang out with Catwoman down there? Is that what's up? Yeah, Catwoman, you see her? Yep, go get her. Go get Selena. All right, got shelf one moved. So this is the new shelf with the comics from over there. And I got the shelf from over there moved over. And then I noticed something. The old shelf is a little bit different than, sh than the new shelf. I don't know if you can you can see that, but let me get over here. It's about a few inches different size. This one, the old one, is wider uh, or deeper. Deeper is the right word than the new one. I guess that uh, that happens when you buy shelves like 15 years apart. So yeah, I'm gonna tell myself that's not gonna bug me, but it's probably gonna bug me, but there's not a damn thing I can do about it. So this corner is empty. So this is gonna be my new work desk. I I work from home, like I said, like I think I said earlier. So this is gonna be my new work desk in here. So I'm not at the kitchen table anymore. And now we've got all the comics over here with the third shelf and I've started putting all the piles over there because there's piles. So now I get to figure out what to do with a lot of this stuff. All right, packing it in for today on the Great Office Rearrange. So got all the comic shelves set up. So got some music gear I need to figure out what to do with. I think this little guy I'm going to sell. Not quite sure what to do with uh, that big pedal board yet. But got the shelves set up. Got all those random piles of comics taken care of. Um, I had a, a little table back over here in this corner that we took out 
they got the, my big base amp there now still got this nightstand in here need to get rid of that but for the most part i'm good to go got this new table set up got to get my work laptop and stuff there but i can take care of that tomorrow so i got my got my hula girl and my lava lamp set up for uh set up for ambiance got some you know reading material when i have you know downtime at, at the office you know eight hours a day of downtime or something like that uh tomorrow i'll be tackling that smaller shelf right there take all these comics put them over on the shelf and then clean up a lot of the random papers and whatever that accumulates down there and then maybe organize all my magic cards down here because that's getting a little out of control but otherwise i'm really happy with the uh with the way this turned out i've needed to do this for a little bit and i've needed to do this for a lot of it this has been needing to happen for a while so glad i finally got it done all right so i've been reading my uh walt simonson thor omnibus not as quickly as i'd like but i ran across this panel or this these couple pages last night so uh, i think we're in like issue 341 so thor is trying to find an identity uh, because he lost the identity of Donald Blake due to what happened in the previous story arc. So he goes to Nick Fury and is like, hey, I need a new identity. Can you guys help me out with that? So they set him up with a costumer and just kind of give him this like plain basic identity. And Nick Fury is, or Thor is still worried about people recognizing him. So Nick Fury gives him a pair of basic glasses he says uh put these cheaters on they always worked for that other guy and then we turn the page and they're apparently going to go talk to some reporters and there is low-key a not low-key low-key a superman cameo in here so thor runs right into clark they, they actually get name dropped um i think it's um right here as yeah let's go clark we're going to be late for the conference so there's a, a, a small little Superman appearance here in this uh, this old school Thor comic, which is just absolutely amazing. I don't care how much scrapbook paper costs. You can't come in. Go away. God, these people. All right, guys. Welcome back to the Expensive Paper Collectors Club. Let's go ahead and take roll here. So first off, Stephen King hardback collector guy. Okay, uh, next up, Pokemon collector guy. I fought a child at Target for this pack of cards. Yeah, you're the reason they don't sell that stuff at Target or Walmart anymore. Don't do that again. All right, next up we got movie poster collector guy. Hey, after the meeting, does anyone want to go dumpster diving behind the theater for more posters? I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Don't, don't do that, please. And lastly, we've got Magic the Gathering collector guy. Oh, is it my turn? No one else here is playing Magic. What are you doing? Pay attention. All right, uh, looks like we have one other new member to uh, the, the club this week. That is Toilet Paper Collector Guy? What's up, guys? No, that's not how this club works. What do you mean? It was expensive when I bought it. I don't care if it was expensive when you bought it. Get out of here. Oh, man. Go. Leave the toilet paper. 